Welcome to Poetry of Immigrants. Glad to have you back. It's May 30th, and in honor of Mother's Day, we're getting it in right at the end of the month, we're going to uh, celebrate mothers. This is Mother Russia. The throat. Goalless. I am the genius of old age these days on Nevsky Prospekt. My knees ache in supplication and prayer, selling piebald, knit hats, lipstick peach, and myself. I am genius, Yagini. I am the throat of Russia, singing devotions in humility and hunger on my knees, seeking red meat to feed my joy, my grandchild, my life, my hope for firm, dense breasts for her future. She sings so wantonly on this street corner with me. I am throat, Yagualis. I am the voice of hunger in the back alleys on my knees, seeking black bread, honor, codes, justice, rules, and rubles. I am the voice of babushkas, aging pensioners. I see only the ankle tattoos of tourists standing over me. I am voice, Yagualis. I am grief, Yagoria. In the voices of bereaved mothers against the war, my own dead sons, Sasha, murdered, mugged on this spot. Alexei gripped his strong chest, they say, in astonishment. Both fathers who sang their grief away in the choir worked two jobs, trolley drivers rising at 2 a.m. I am grief, Yagoria. I am hunger, Yagolod of spirit, Ruskaya Dusha. Most days I sit a little in, as in Soviet times, under Monet's Lady in the Garden, Damaf Sadu, her silhouette in diaphanous white lace and parasol, an icon in a green garden, poised in serenity and grace. Ah, Russian Ark, Hermitage, take me back to my revolutionary dreams back into the painting. I am hunger. Yagwalad. That's in honor of brother, Russian mothers and all mothers the world over. What's your mother's name, Chase? Dawn. Dawn. Please welcome Chase Joseph LeMay from Clinton. Thank and, you for having me. Oh, <laughs> great. Thank you for the flags you brought. A little bit of decor. A little bit of decor. A little decor. decor. Yeah. And it's not, it's not um, so striking because they go together with colors, don't they? The red, white, and blue, which we're honoring for May, Memorial Day, too. The red, white, and blue. Nice coincidence, both countries, red, white, and blue. The differences between them, the similarities as well. The differences and the similarities. <laughs> Tell us about some of the similarities that you felt. Chase is back from Russia, semester abroad, um, Seton Hall graduate. Oh, Stonehill, Stonehill College. So sorry. No, no, don't worry. So sorry. <laughs> no. Stonehill. Stonehill College. Oh, Jesuit. Uh, it's a... Uh, yeah, it was my first Catholic school experience, actually. Um, oh, that's cool. I grew cool. up in a public school, went to Morgan, uh -huh. and it was my first experience with... Morgan's, yeah! I mean, my, the old Morgan, you know, the before, old the new, Morgan. before the new building, you know. Cool. <laughs> but um, Stonehill was my first uh, Catholic school experience, so uh -huh. that was Me too, Fairfield University, very first. You gotta yeah. adapt a little bit to the change in the culture, and you know, things are a bit different. Okay. But, I mean, I guess that's the whole... Point of the show is getting used to new things and 
the whole point of the show is um, elegy in a way. Um, I'm in an elegiac mood. I've felt that way all day, thinking about mothers. But I've also felt kind of uh, warm and fuzzy about my past memories of Russia, 1961. So Chase, 2018, right? Mm -hmm. Frank, by the way, I'm Frank Crowley. <laughs> 1961, in 1961, I said in Russian. Uh, we're also sharing some joy in the language and the music of it. So what's, what's the same? Um, what were you, your first impressions? You were describing Starbucks. Yes. Um, so upon landing, um, getting off the plane, <laughs> it was a bit terrifying seeing so I didn't, I didn't know, no, I knew no Russian whatsoever. Um, just yet. <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet, 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 yet. Da, da. da. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that was a bit concerning. Uh, I, was, uh, I knew uh, a very basic Zdrasvutia, uh, but I couldn't even pronounce it like that. It was more no. like Zdrasvutia. 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 Took me 40 years. <laughs> Just to, it's the pronunciation of all that. <laughs> but um, the letter, I got off the plane, and no. the first thing I saw was a sign to be guiding us where we need to go for luggage and such. But the first sign I read, it didn't have any English on it for, oh. I mean, so it was that, uh oh. <laughs> Oh, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Um, that, that's when I thought, you know, I'm diving into this experience knowing nothing. There's going to be no similarities. I'm just completely surrounded by foreign culture. And it was funny because I walked into the lobby with the group. I followed them. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking around kind of just, where do I go? What do I do? And what else there would there be except a Starbucks in the lobby? The only thing written Same. in English. And I'm like, I'm going there. <laughs> I know what that is. I know what that is. So I'm going to go right in there, and I'm just going to be a little bubble of safety right off the bat. Isn't that funny? The bubble of safety is so important to carry with you. I was holding on to, I was holding on to comfort, I think, at that point still. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was afraid to really dive in at that moment. But well, I was kind of forced to even still in there because I walked in, and I was like, oh, I'll just get a muffin or something. And so I walk up, and the woman probably said something along the lines of Privet, что ты хочешь? And at that moment, I'm like, now I would know that she's asking, oh, what do, what do you want? Oh my God. But at that moment, I'm just sitting there like, oh, uh -huh. yeah, I forgot about this part of this. So I start looking, I'm like, pointing at a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> And she's uh, uh. just pointing at things and hoping for the best. And I think that's when it really set in, like, oh, you know, there's going to be some things that you think you know, but you're not going to be ready because it's not the same. Wow. The same and yet different. The same and yet different. So what was the first very different thing that hit you? Ooh. First very different thing I would say was, honestly, after we left, uh, we got on our buses with all of our luggage and we went right into where we were staying, our uh, dormitory, our obsejitia, and we lived in an apartment style housing with a very small, um, very small common room, uh. like less than... 12 feet long and five feet wide. And then we'd have our own separate rooms. But mm. for me, it wasn't even a big cultural difference, but just moving in to somewhere, because that was my first time living in like a full apartment. Mm -hmm. And then going out and walking down the street towards the metro uh. and realizing, oh, we're gonna go into the city just to get our first, you know, uh, take it in for the first time, see what it's like. Downtown Moscow. Uh, Saint, downtown St. Petersburg first. Good. And so you landed in St. Petersburg. Yeah. Ah. And we got to experience um, getting on the metro for the first time, having to buy a card, having to... This is all foreign because growing up, you know, on the shoreline of Connecticut, not only was I adapting suddenly to living in a city, 
Oh. I was adapting to living in a city where I didn't understand much at all from the very beginning. And can't read the road signs. I can't read oh anything. Um, luckily, I had friends along the way who had, who had spoken Russian or studied Russian for two, oh. two years, two and a half years, and had a better understanding. Oh, that says you need to put in this much money. That yeah. says follow this sign. That says, oh, put your bags here. But um, that was the biggest, you know, cultural, like, smack in the face. Like, that's, that's a good descriptor. Like, I'm not only in a place which I don't understand the language, I'm in a place where I don't understand the customs and how I'm supposed to act, how I'm supposed to behave in the city. Behavior, and right. That was the biggest adjustment right off the bat. So I'd say the, by far the language that was the biggest, you know, what's going on here. <laughs> um, as my friends will testify who I was walking with, I started to pick up on the language in the same way that a kindergartner would. Yeah. We would travel in a small group together wherever we went. Um, and my habit was to read, as soon as I understood, you know, letters and how to start piecing together words after about two weeks. Oh. Um, my friend told me I did a kindergartner learning style where we'd walk down the street and if there was a street sign, I would read it out loud, whatever it was. And that, oh. so I'd be like, uh, oh. ap, apteka, ap, ap, apteka, apteka. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that became one of my favorite words actually to say. And the they're, palatalized E, I mean, apteka. Yeah, because they'd co they'd correct me. They'd be like, "Oh, you know, it looks like apteka, but you have to pronounce the yeah apteka, <laughs> apteka." Oh, I went through the same. Because you have to realize, like, oh, you know, this is different. And having some people to guide me along the way was helpful. But that's how I adjusted. Was kindergartner learning, walking around, reading aloud, and hoping to get it right. Flashback to April nineteen sixty one. By the way, I love that she addressed you in the familiar Tihuorches instead of Virechitia. Yeah. In other words, the familiar you Would or you the polite like? you. How different. Very friendly. And how same but different. Uh, April of 61, um, I had just had six months of Russian one at Fairfield. Another Jesuit institution, they pushed Russian. Yeah. And then uh, after Kiev and Leningrad and Moscow, April 13th, our troop from Fordham University, Eastern Catholic Apostolate, wound up a, a really great three week tour, but it was sandwiched in between Gary Powers which had just happened. They shot down an American spy plane. Gary Powers was captured. That's history. Yeah. And then book ended with, oh, we're in Red Square. Had come back from Leningrad. Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space. At that. Just landed. And here's the parade. You know how things get arranged there, as yeah. you said, um, with Putin's presence is, oh my God, these banners, these flags, these they overwhelming celebrate. colors and music, and, and there's Yuri Gagarin uh, in effigy or in banner, <laughs> not the real guy. Yeah, oh, is this wonderful or what? My 19-year-old eyes went boing. So I just pick out one thing. And just couldn't get enough. Yeah. And then we jumped on the bus and we came home and I was never the same since. It changes you. How Absolutely. has it changed you? Um, Four months is really an immersion. Yeah. Chase, <laughs> that's one heck of a challenge. Mentally, emotionally, physically, food, everything. Oh, food was a How has it change. changed you? I'd say in ways... Uh, it changed, I mean, not to like, overdo it, but it completely changed my life. Um, wow. I went over there as an international relations major. Ah. And, I mean, I still am. However, I, that was my first true abroad experience. Yeah. Um, I'd gone to Canada, but 
that was really my only time leaving the country. So mm -hmm. from the first moment when I landed in London in our little transition period and then going straight to St. Petersburg, mm -hmm. my time in Russia really, in Russia and then in all the other countries that I visited while I was over there, jumping around as much as I could from- Smart. Being, I was recognized the opportunity. Yeah, get it all in. But it just completely opened my mind to oh, yeah. culture. It opened my mind to art and opportunity. Art. Ooh. And the, the value of interpersonal connection. Because you know, you could read about a culture in a book. You can do your best to read about it online. But poets, until you, you discuss, can read the poets. Yes, un, until, but until you talk, until you're face to face with someone and learning about their culture mm. through their eyes, and through what they say, you you can't really understand that. And so That's I come back from being there for four months, mm -hmm. and suddenly my entire world has just been opened up about how many more possibilities there are to really work with changing the world in ah. the way that I the way that I see it to yes. be beneficial. Yes, I wish I had had that experience. I was nineteen, and I was just so cocooned as a college freshman at Fairfield <laughs> Catholic Culture in 1960. Um, and then, pow! All of a sudden. Yeah, but over the last 50, 60 years, um, I also lived with families in Stratford who are Russian. Yeah, first immigration, second immigration. Um, what are some of the other contrasts in the culture, um, music, art, painting, poetry, even dancing, you know, which you can do. <laughs> We're going to have to do that We're later on. Uh, yeah. We'll take the mic off. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then we're, yeah, and I won't try to imitate because <laughs> I know where I would fall, but that's where my heart is. I'll do my best. Yeah, Russian dancing, you know. Absolutely incredible. And the music. Um, Upbeat and fun and fast. And well, I mean, it was really cool actually. So we saw the traditional, um, we went to a dinner at the end of my experience where uh, they sat us down and they said, oh, enjoy. And oh. all of a sudden, uh, it was about a half hour of different <laughs> costumed dancers coming out and doing traditional Russian dances to different songs. Uh, they danced to, uh, I, I wish I knew all the names, but my, the one that stuck out in my mind the most, the one that we had learned, was Kalinka. Kalinka. Kalinka, 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 Maya, Sadhu Yagda, Malinka, Malinka, Maya. And then it gets faster and oh, faster. Yeah, very popular. People running around, like <laughs> hooking and just. The, it's fast paced, it's fun, it's like movement and just excitement from that song. And it was all about a lot of their music and their dancing involved, you know, jumping up or, you know, like lots of clapping. And I mean, the videos that I have, I can't even really, it's a brief window into like the huge expanse of the culture we were like exposed to that day. Ah, and the Russian soul, which is so expansive in the arts. Yeah. You know, as you mentioned, 19th century, and um, how wonderful. Now, you also said you saw a ballet. I did. Oh, my gosh. Same now, that's a difference. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we as Americans aren't crazy about poetry from the early grades on the way the Russians are. Yeah. You got a $30,000, $30,000, you got a 30,000 seat. St. Petersburg Stadium, and Vasnyasyansky is doing a poem just like this. This was a takeoff on Vasnyasyansky's Goya. He did a poem about the Spanish painter Goya, who recorded all the atrocities that the Spanish and the French in the early 19th century. So I was so taken with that poem that I wanted to do a, a riff, a spin-off. But music, painting, Ballet. Ballet. Americans, I mean, there are a couple of commercial movies that show a young American boy, the only guy in the class among girls, learning ballet. And that's a very American style. Looking over there, how many more boys were involved in the, like, they led it. And from a young, yeah, from a very young age, oh my they gosh. talk about their development. Um, 
What in did our class. you see? Do you remember? In the ballet itself, I had definitely very cool experiences with that. Um, I remember just being astonished at how in time they all were and <laughs> how precise their movements were, and everything was perfectly choreographed. Like by the moment, they had moments where they would be crossing each other in lines and perfectly timed spins. Oh yes, I remember that. And it's just absolutely like breathtaking to watch and realizing how precise this must have been in planning. The t oh my God, the timing and the pacing. Mm -hmm. I was. It's With shocking, my mouth? My and phone. you know we don't get that. I mean, obviously it's here, but it's not as big of a part of their culture no. here. Poetry, ballet, those are some contrasts. We don't nurture that from the primary grades. Yeah. It would be great it's because a, it's not in our culture as much. So. It's not in our culture as much. We've got um, contact sports and all kinds of healthy stuff, <laughs> uh, and the Russians do gymnastics just as well. But oh yeah, music. Singing, I like that song you sang. Poetry, Iskustva, Hermitage. Um, flashback. I was in the Bolshoi Theater. That may have been where we went. For the in Moscow? We visited it, I believe. Yes, you visited the Bolshoi. It's a must stop on all foreign visits. Oh, and the four horsemen on the on the edifice above this beautiful building. So I'm 19. I go in, and uh, oh, we saw Chopiniana. It's uh, uh, an amalgam of Chopin's music. Uh, we didn't see S Swan Lake or Libidinia uh, Osira or any of the the traditional Russian, but. What a brilliant evening that was. The know? experience just... You mentioned there's an American yes. dancing. Dancing with the Russian uh, company. Is it the Kirov Ballet or the um, Bolshoi Ballet? I'm not positive, Kirov actually. is, um, of course, Leningrad, St. Petersburg. That's so it. then it must have been Kirov. You saw it in... Yeah. St. Petersburg. We visited the Bolshoi when we were in uh, Moscow, but more of like a, oh, this is yeah. that theater. But um, Kirov and the Bolshoi have been rival companies oh. for a hundred years, ever since <laughs> Petiba choreographed Swan Lake. So that competition has gone so well. <laughs> and they drive each other, I'm sure. And then we get the stars who come to New York and it's like, whoa, How? when they look at Who's this young American who's Actually, in the troop? Yeah, we we were looking at the um, the list of the names who are of the people who are in the ballet. I'm like, oh, this one is very American. Like, it's a very American name. I wonder what's going on there. Yeah. And so during the intermission, <laughs> we go out into uh, into a little little place where you can just get food and drinks and just sit for a moment and walk, stretch your legs, and we're just talking in English, because, you know, at that point, you know, we were more comfortable being in this zone, you know, oh, well, we'll just discuss things right now, and we're not too scared of our surroundings to be talking. But we won't mention politics yeah. necessarily. We're, yeah, we're, we'll talk about the ballet. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just keep it to that. But um, as we're out there, uh, this woman walks by us, and she says, are, are you guys Americans? Oh. <laughs> and usually we're told to react to that with like a, what? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Why? Why? But um, we're like, ah, oh, yes, we're just here for a cultural excursion to really uh, do our best to soak in Russian culture. She's like, I I'm also an American. We're like, we're like, what? Why are you like? What are you doing all the way out in St. Petersburg? She said, Oh, my son is in the company. Oh. Uh, and wow, we're sitting there. We're like, that must be the one, the American boy. And she told us how um. He'd been dancing with the company for a couple of years now, and how they, yeah. she brought him over there to really develop further, and he went to the schools there and like danced there. And he was one of, like, he was fantastic. We were like, oh, which, which character is he within the show? Which, who is he playing? And, because I wish I could remember the exact story to really like, oh, he was this pirate or this but hero. he's one of the key dancers. Yeah. He's called a premier dancer there. And it was just... An American. Happening to find one there. Just, she was like, why? You guys are just 
here? Yeah. And you're yeah, watching my son dance? Yeah. yeah. And we didn't get the opportunity to meet him. We got the her contact information that, oh, you know, he'd, he'd love to come out and meet you guys, but oh, timing it just never happened. No, and not when you're... When you're doing stuff like that. Oh, what an opportunity that yeah, would have been. Like, just like, oh, yeah, I happened to meet this uh, American star in Russia, but... Who's got stories to tell? He must have way more than we could have had. Because they had that um, Bolshoi... Uh, Rivalry. Flap. Oh my God. Somebody, something about acid being thrown in the face of the director, and this was five years ago. Horrible, horrible. What? Competition? <laughs> That's more than competition. What? At that point. What? That's just really, more. I mean, well, I think maybe we'll take a break. Perfect, yeah. Does that sound? Yeah. Maybe I'll lead in with some, with some We're dancing ready. next time. Yeah. <laughs> Next time we'll lead in with a little bit of dancing. And yeah, perfect. Perfect. I'll take a break. So we're on break. Please come back. We'll teach you a little more Russian. Nemnoga Pavuski. Not too much. Yeah. <laughs> Diminutive. Little bits, little bits. Nemnoga. Um. <laughs> done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Donate stuff, create jobs. Hmm, maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20 mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Fast paced family life in need of a slowdown? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you, instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come yeah, on come in. Come on in. Brochettes with sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini, and they're the cores that we cut away, not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? <laughs> I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. Thank you for doing that <laughs> and practicing because at the end you're going to be really good. We are back and I'm going to open with a poem. I'm going to start talking about... No. Wait till Start talking about poetry now. I'm going to open up with a poem 
that is my favorite about Pushkin. Ah, oh, so Derjavin was an 18th century poet, and uh, in a sense, he was a mentor for all the 19th century great poets who came. Pushkin, Alexander Pushkin is the national poet of Russia. And I thought, wow, there must have been some imaginative connection, some creative connection between the two. So let me channel Derzhavin's voice and have you be Putin for a minute. Putin. Sorry, slip. Pushkin. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey! What a switch, huh? Love would, having. Would that Putin would have a little of the Russian poet in him? Don't you think that? He'd have a degree of it. Oh, know? he'd have to have a degree. But that might change things, because you know, if the philosophers and historians and military can't save us, maybe the poets can. Arts. The arts. arts. Above all. The arts above all. Um, so I'm going to channel Gershavin. I'm the old guy. Hey, perfect role. Pushkin. You're, you're young. You're Pushkin. You're talented beyond belief. Um, your ancestors way back were from Africa, believe that. Um, an African chief was imported to the court of Peter the Great, and his descendants resulted in Pushkin. Wow, that's history that's yeah. not in the texts. <laughs> you don't find that. No. Bright and clear. You appear, Pushkin, vibrato in your voice, sparkles in your eyes. I, Derjavin, am crippled with age. Your sparks catch fire in my soul. You sing your verses with intoxicating rapture. I rise from my deathbed of dropsy, despondence, dread. You read my verses to me in adolescent adoration. Don't kiss my hand, but help me stand close to you. With my drooping head, I want to look into your swarthy face. See those full lips move to my magical sounds. I grow young again. My heart flowers in your gaze transfigured. You are the poet I wanted to be. Ironically, you as youth are mentor to me with your singular sound. Yavas Lubil, Yavas Lubil, I loved you. I launched a new versification, but you, you are a meteor in our tradition. Your grandfatherly respect touches me. Your face is bright and clear. Come nearer so that I may embrace our future. Oh, embarrassed he flees. The, the young poet at the knee of the master. Wow. There's one name in Russian literature and everything else evolves. Did you go to the Hermitage? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That was a full, full day. <laughs> um, and I mean, I wish that I could see it all, and, oh. but it would take what so is it? long. 3,000 something, either 3,000 paintings or 3,000 rooms. And it or changes always. Does it? They, um, they'll bring in new art and move stuff out. You know, oh, we have this temporary exhibit and you could see this now. Or, un Unfortunately, I wish that I could have seen it all, but that would take way longer than I had. Months. And there's too much to see. There yeah. is, but it, what a thrill. Do you remember one image that stands out? I must say, um, the one image that sticks with me the most is as we were walking in the pillars of red that we saw. It was a vibrantly red room. Wow. And it wasn't even a singular piece of art. 
uh, that did it for me. Oh. It wasn't mm -hmm. watching, it wasn't sitting and just staring at one painting that really blew my mind, because it was too frequently happening. Yeah. It, having, being exposed to that much history and culture, all you can really do is hope to just remember it as one big beautiful memory. And so I think if mm. I had to remember one thing, it's walking through the halls mm. and watching like the colors shift as like, but that first red room with <gasps> drapes and the pillars and the room was glowing red from sunlight Ooh. passing through shades There's onto the image. these. Yes. And it was so beautiful and that memory of just walking and watching and just trying to soak it all in, whether it was a painting or a piece of history enclosed in glass, mm. it was all just culture at its most pure form. There, and the colors were changing. How beautiful you describe that, that first entrance experience, which is uh, common in Russia because it's the, like, that entry is like, and I'll ask you about the Kremlin in a minute, but for me it was one painting. I mentioned it in the poem, Dama Sadu, Lady in a Garden by Monet. <gasps> oh, I'm getting chills. The sunlight's coming through the plain glass, clear glass, and it's an afternoon sun, and it just illuminated that one spot on the wall where Almost as if it was, the painting was translucent. You know Monet and how wonderful he is with his colors. He could almost see through into another universe, which is what inspired me to um, channel that old pensioner's voice under that painting. I placed her there. <gasps> that was the moment. And then I was the grandeur of the entrance in the Winter Palace, which oh. stretches on the Nieva, um, and in Rastrelli's architecture from Italy and the colors, the pastels and the outside uh, of the building. That was almost more beautiful I mean, than some of the art. art. I mean, yeah. one of the like the I, architecture. Yeah, yeah. just because even <coughs> you asked me what struck me the most inside the Hermitage, and to be honest, no. Um, yeah. What struck me the most was leaving <laughs> the Hermitage. We got there midday, uh -huh. but by the time we left, you know, because of the schedule, it was already dark. Uh -huh. And so leaving, after seeing all that art for the whole day, <laughs> turning around, and the lights illuminated the colors and the structure of the Hermitage itself in contrast against the night sky, that oh my was what actually that's, took my breath away. That's gorgeous. And, you know, we had the whole whole circle and with the giant just the statue in the center mm -hmm. and with um, on the opposite side the archway with the horses and the statues above it lights illuminating all of that so just standing in the center looking around at the contrast of the stone statues the color of the hermitage against the night sky that and it was just such a beautiful building holding so much beautiful history that's that would actually be the image that stuck with me the most I mean Entering the building was one thing, but just looking from the outside at this place that's just perfectly contrasted against the night sky. And lit up. And lit up. With they those. know exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the uh, monument to Alexander the First, 1800, 1825. There's, that's the center. so tall. Oh, yeah. Huge. And this plaza is so... Right on Nevsky. Right on, is, is it? It's right I along forgot. Nevsky. Oh. And so that's where I was to watch one of the parades, actually. Ah. Um, and then the, the doorways, and, and then the um, four statues at that main entrance. Mm. Uh, it's all coming back. It's, I mean, this is like my return to Russia. It's a, it was breathtaking. The first, seeing it for the first time was uh -huh. just... I stopped dead in my tracks and I just looked around and I was blessed to be able to return to that spot multiple times more for work or volunteer work because it was right in ah. the hall like when you walked off of the metro station off of the purple line 
Uh -huh. I remember I would have to go up, take a left, take a right, uh -huh. across the street, across, um, not too busy, uh -huh. but, um, and then walk in towards the Hermitage. And then the office that I was volunteering at was right as you entered into the archway. Ah. And that, that's actually, I don't even know if I had told you about this experience before, but um, I volunteered with a company oh, over in St. Petersburg. such a good idea. Um, to, it was a place called Ambassadors Work and Travel. And in the same way that I was lucky enough to go yeah. to visit Russia, Ambassadors helps Russian students uh, to work and travel in the United States and other places around the world. Ah. So my time w volunteering with them was uh, helping Russian students, particularly for the U.S., where I would help them work on their interview process. I would teach them how to be expressive, or I, I would give them words that would like, oh, you mean to say this. Yes. So I helped let Russians you know, come to the United States to experience what it's like here in the same way that I got to experience their culture there. What a great program. It's Is that state sponsored or is that uh, independent? I believe it's independent. Yeah. They can they work with them from taking them off the street, those who are interested, and walking them right up to the embassy the day of their interview. Mm -hmm. It's actually a fantastic program and I, I stayed in contact with uh, the people afterwards to potentially go back. But um, Oh yeah. What a great gig. You volunteered to break down the barriers. And to assist in an easier transition. For everyone else. Um, do you know any Russians, either from your trip or just ancillary friends, who are here now? It actually was the most ridiculous coincidence. Uh. I, um, so this past couple weeks, so not even like close to when I got back. I mean, I returned the summer of 2018. Yeah. And now, entering the summer of 2019, about two, two and a half weeks ago, I happened to be in Cape Cod for a week before I graduated. And I oh. happened to meet um, a Russian girl who was there. Uh huh. And we were talking. And I was like, oh, so how do you, like, you're here from Russia? Like, how did you, how did you end up here? And she's like, oh, I'm actually here through a work and travel program. Uh -huh. And I was like, would it happen to be ambassadors? <laughs> and she's like, yes. Oh, bingo. How, how this coincidence, being able to like find someone randomly in the United States who randomly. worked with my friends and my coworkers over in St. Petersburg. And so I got to see the direct effect of what I was doing over there. I don't think I had ever worked directly with her because it was past my time. Yeah. But she may have been one of the people who started their interview process when I was over there. I have a question. Was her name Ksenia Pavlovna Chernik? No. 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 It's because she was over. What was her name? Uh -huh. It was. Oh, I remember because it, it had the. It stuck out to me because it had the Russian L in it, and I was oh. like, "Oh, that's not seen over here very often." Yeah. <laughs> and she uh, wrote it out that way. Not. Oh, not popular either, Ksenia. Um, so I'm having coffee at the Turtle Cafe in Westbrook. Mm -hmm. Recognize the accent a year ago. Oh yeah, the year before I worked as a waitress in Cape Cod, she says. And my Russian friend, same program I think, said let's try a different place, Westbrook. So I hear her, I said, oh, would you ever consider, she's 19, would you ever consider coming on a taping of a show on Russia? So last year, she sat here, I sat there, 19-year-old <laughs> Russian girl from south of Moscow, Ksenia Pavlovna Cherny. Cher Cherny is black, black in Russian, so it would be like, you know, so, so black, Susan Black. <laughs> She was marvelous. They're so polite and kind and just... Oh, and uh, so I brought flowers because that's a very European thing to hand to uh, a lady guest live flowers because that's what they did when we got off the train in Warsaw and Poland just and... Tradition. tradition. Politeness. Politeness. 
gentility. Um, what a coincidence, but kind of surprising yeah, synchronicity. Yeah. It's just, I'm so happy you told me that story. Two and a half weeks ago, boing. <laughs> just right over. Yeah, you're on your, your week. Of well, my one week of like, hey, well, I guess I don't need to worry about, you know, <laughs> academics before graduation. We're just going to relax and enjoy the beaches. And, oh, you're Russian. Yeah. That reminds me of all my academic work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where do they come? They come to compatible places like the restaurants on Cape Cod, good source of income, or if you want to change, just come the to the experience. Just the experience. And that's where um, I happen to be a lot of my, I mean, not even, a couple of them are friends. I still have a couple friends in Russia to this day where just we talk once in a while. You but do? Yeah. By phone? Uh, we'll, we'll use uh, the app, you know, WhatsApp, and we'll text, or we'll What's use app? Facebook. Cause, Facebook. And I have, you know, I convinced some of them to get, you know, more American apps. You know, I was like, hey, try this Snapchat thing. And she's <laughs> like, what do you do? And I was like, I don't know. You take a picture, and yeah. you can type to each other. She's like, why not just text? I was like, well, that's what the picture's for. She's like, why do you need the picture? And I was like, you don't need the picture. It's just for, never mind. Just don't worry about it. And she got it. And she was. She started typing to me. I was like, no, you can send a picture. She was like, why would I send a picture? Of, like, she was like, of what? And I was like, I don't know. Where are you right now? She's like, I'm at a restaurant. And I was like, that, you know, just... Never mind. <laughs> We're not going to worry about oh. the spread of There's American nice, applications. There's a nice contrast too. You know? <laughs> they just and they because they use VK as yeah. their main form of social media, mm -hmm. which I tried to access. Mm -hmm. I tried to create an account, and. So uh, as did many of my um, American friends, because we would always, when we were out and about, Russian people, as soon as they found out we're American, oh, add oh, me on VK. Yeah. It's like, well, I guess we should make a VK. And we put our American phone numbers in. Oh. Surprise, surprise, all of our accounts got deleted off the app. Uh, surprise, surprise. Don't really know why that happened. Politics and surveillance. Did you feel monitored when you were there? I was always aware uh, of the possibility of being watched, and not not just the possibility. I'd say more the um, uh, probability. Uh, and I had a Russian phone uh, when, that I bought when I was in St. Petersburg because we wanted to be able to have access to cellular data when, because it would be mostly when we used our American phones, you'd be finding places with Wi-Fi and connect really quickly. Hey, we're here right now. Meet us at this place if oh. you can, and hopefully you'd hope that they are also connected. And so we realized, you know, it'll be easier if we just get Russian phones because it's way cheaper. It's ridiculously cheap with their satellite connection. So we all would buy Russian phones. Mm -hmm. But we all also recognized, you know, how easy it would be. Like, hmm, the American has a Russian phone now. We should be aware of that, and we could use that. So whenever we wanted to talk about politics, we would always um, we would put all of our phones into a separate room, mm -hmm. and then we would go, and we would, or at least if it weren't in a separate room, we would be making sure they're like far away from us, enough in a, in a different zone, make sure it's off. But even if it's off, you know, we were still skeptical. We were like, no, because they could always mm. find a way that yeah. So hmm. we would always discuss politics without the phones around. Um, and honestly, it could be a huge coincidence of things happening, mm -hmm. but we lived all on the side of our dormitory, the apartment complex, where all of our windows faced the road, the open road. And the building directly across the street from us was not occupied. Oh. at that time. I wonder if it had been. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it had not been. Either way, we were always a bit skeptical. But then, one of the most ridiculous stories from my entire experience in Russia <gasps> was, so it was within the first month of being there, because I still had a roommate. My roommate, uh, his name was Neil. He's one of my best friends. We, st we still talk all the time. My friends Reed, Neil, and uh, Philip. Ah. We're still really close. Yeah. So Neil and I stayed in the same room, and we always had this weird, like coincidence where we'd wake up around like the same time every day, and it would be like, oh, morning, morning. So one morning, wow, in the first month we would wake up, and our beds were situated like across the rooms from each other. But we both like kind of wake up, 
and we have this feeling something's wrong something's uh, off both of you both of us and then we kind of like make eye contact for a moment we're like and then we look up and so between us we had like a huge window with these huge drapes over it uh-huh. and there was a stool like that was always there and or uh, and a bedside table standing on my bedside table was a random Russian man taking down our drapes at around eight in the morning. We had locked the door into the apartment complex that the night before. Freaky. And so waking up and there's just this man there and he's <gasps> taking him down and I look up and he looks down and he realizes that I'm awake first. And he says something that will stick to me to this every day for the rest of my life because it was terrifying in that moment. He goes, shh, spot, spot, which means sleep. sleep. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I just roll over. I'm like, I'm not stressing this. I'm, nope, nope, nope. And Neil just rolls over and does the same. Oh my God. They went through that morning and they took all of the Americans' blinds. <laughs> and oh. they said that it was to be, oh, they're just going to be washing them. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay, so we'll get them back within the day. Cleaning the drapes. Three weeks later, oh. we finally go to our director. We're saying, they have our drapes. We've wanted them back because our windows are now. Yeah. The window was like at least seven or eight feet long and like four feet tall so you know you have a clear view into the room and across the and a street. building across the street unoccupied oh my god so eventually we go to the director of our program they're like they have our drapes and they're like they have your what what and we're, we're like yeah they took it to clean it and they're saying okay we need we're gonna go get those back and you know after the director goes to the, like the school they're like oh yes we'll return them now and they put them back up and that was, we kept them closed for the rest of the time <laughs> for most of it, unless we were like, oh, I need more sunlight. But for, so that was the only, that was the scariest thing that I think I experienced over there, or uh, one of the scarier. One of them. Yeah. There are many more. But that is frightening. So I that's where I think surveillance was oh a God. high possibility because that kind of coincidence or cleaning and just happening to not return it for weeks. But a locked door to locked a door. private room and yeah, mm-hmm. a man standing. Oh. Spot. Spot. I, Spot. It was absolutely terrifying. But, it, I mean, a, a singular moment of... Whoa. Oh. Whoa. That flew by. Hold that thought for June 27th. Man, that's a great story. But how can you top that? Well, <laughs> take off your mic and do some dancing. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to have something that I've always wanted to do my whole life. I wanted to learn how to do the Cossack kick dance. Oh, man, do I. A little bit in the knee. Can we have okay. some uh, dancing music, please? Whoa. Oh, bravo, man. <laughs> you were the best. Oh, my God, that's a fabulous Ooh. dance. It's, oh. Chase, I can't tell you how grateful I am for bringing Russia back to me, for bringing me back to Russia, and for doing this for our wonderful American audience to know that Ruskaya Dusha, Russian soul, is alive and well and needs, it needs this. Cross cultural dynamic conversation. I'm so grateful, but you know, there are no surprises. It's just like your dear grandmother, Lynn, is sitting across from me at lunch at the senior citizens. Oh, my grandson was over, and the rest is history. June 27th. Oh my God, how are you going to top that? 
bring the bag of surprises and take one thing out and then another. Some more to come. Thanks again. And Thank thanks for the me. dance. <laughs> You're the best. We are good. Oh, man. Yeah.